Members, members and guests, you may be seated. I often wonder how our children and grandchildren will judge our stewardship. Will they thank us for leaving our state, nation, and world in better condition than when we had inherited it? Or will they ask, how could you have left us with this mess? The answer is for us to decide. Yet even though 97,000 more Minnesotans are working today than at the depth of the Great Recession, there's still more than 168,000 Minnesotans who want to work but cannot find employment. They must be our number one priority. So I say to legislators, let's take your best ideas and my best ideas and turn them into jobs, and let's do it now. One national study estimates that my bonding bill would create 21,700 jobs, most of them in the private sector. If you're skeptical, divide by two. That's still more than 10,000 Minnesotans now unemployed who could be working all over our state. Legislators, you are obviously entitled to your own preferred projects. I ask, however, that you develop your priorities quickly and pass a bonding bill in the next month. The sooner you act, The sooner you act, the sooner several thousand unemployed Minnesotans will be doing the work that those repairs and renovations require. Pass the bonding bill now, please. Some of you reportedly want to avoid voting on the stadium until after next fall's elections. That would be terribly unfair to the several thousand unemployed Minnesotans who could be working on that project this year and to the Vikings. Pass the stadium bill this session, please. Sitting upstairs are two Minnesota veterans. Mr. Stephen Jackson served the United States Army for 15 years in places like Iraq. Mr. Jack Marshall served for six years in the Air Force and did a tour in Kuwait. Mr. Jackson, Mr. Marshall, thank you. These two heroes served our state and nation with great patriotism, valor, and honor. Now they can't find jobs. That is wrong. So pass a Jobs Now bill and expand the Minnesota GI Bill, please. <laughs> Let us resolve that we will conduct this session's financial affairs responsibly. No more borrowing. Minnesotans want more efficient government. They want better services. And they want us to cooperate, cooperate and compromise in order to deliver them. I stand ready to work with legislators on both sides of the aisle to enact laws that will better Minnesota. The state of the state is good, by the way. Uh, again, I would simply, as we so often have uh, suggested, uh, a $5 billion deficit, $1 billion surplus. And uh, let us never forget that. I think that is the major turnaround for respect to the state of Minnesota as we think about the last year. And so uh, going forward, we look forward to working with the governor. He mentioned certainly uh, his uh, jobs initiatives and uh, we're gonna take a look at that. Obviously, we're gonna have a bonding bill. It may not be exactly what he has, uh, but uh, we're gonna try to work through and, and make something happen there. Uh, we'll see about the Viking Stadium. Uh, I would suggest that we need uh, his leadership in terms of making that happen. Uh, I don't think there's anything other than, you know, anything like the governor that can, can move that forward. Where do you differ with the governor on how to best to create jobs? Well, we believe that it starts, starts, begins, and ends in the private sector. You know, making sure that Minnesota's business economy is competitive. I think the permitting bill that we worked on uh, is a great step forward, but we shouldn't rest on that. Uh, we weren't called incompetent to, to govern or anything like that. Uh, uh, so that, you know, the, the, that kind of rhetoric was, was absent, and thank goodness it was. And, I think you know he extended himself uh, in a spirit of cooperation to us, and and we'll certainly reach back to him and and certainly work with him towards a you know successful session. 